Welcome to the Eater Man. Hello and welcome to the Eprom 9. Someone a while, I can't remember who, but I haven't bothered to look it up. Asked for a teardown of a 360. I've kind of already torn down the 360 and have it on display here. So, well, we might as well show the guts straight away and dismantle the disk drive. Which I will put back together because I'm keeping this for a spare if my one decides to fuck up. Which they like to. Mechanically bits we built today, oh god, <laughs> it's a bad mix. But yes, you surprisingly in these things, the caps are made by Rubicon, which is a Japanese company. So they're actually decent caps, which is why none of them are bulging. I haven't tested them with my ESR meter, and that's back at home now with all my electronic test equipment, apart from the multimeter. But yeah, the, this is the point for failure, either the CPU or GPU. At least the company that built these actually did try to throw in quality here and there, but Microsoft completely got them there with their requirements. Interesting trivia is the same people that make these actually make things like MacBook Pros, which shows they can make decent equipment. It comes down to what the client wants, aka Microsoft, who, well, despite being the richest company in the world, still feel the need to cost cut, which is quite appalling if you ask me. So here's your two fans that sound like a jet turbine engine with turbo thrusters and afterburners going at full belt the continued point through using it made in Thailand I suppose it's not China, the rest is China and of course absolutely bloody caked in dust this is my brother's machine or what's left of it, his old one, he's got a new one now yeah there's no point going for reproduction models on these things you might as well just buy a new one <laughs> when they bugger up unless you've got a spare disk drive and it is actually the disk drive you might as well go sod it and just buy a new one. <laughs> Fixing, redoing these BGAs, I've done it with the proper tools, had no real luck, it lived for a week. Even Mr. VX had, had very limited success with his laptop. Which of course, he has now since replaced with a new laptop. And these are all torques, I forgot that, I actually forgot it. Because these days companies don't want you delving inside their stuff. So they put these little bastard screws on. However, I have the correct tools these days, so we'll just find the right size port. That fits them and it also fits them, which eradicates the need for a changeover. So, I shall stop the camera while I undo all these torx screws. Righty then, so we have the chassis off of it. And we're also going to remove these, the CPU heat sinks, which on the Elite they have refined to a different design. Not sure if it's better or not, but it's still susceptible to the red ring of death, the Elite model, so keep that in mind if you have one. Now, let's see if we can find any evidence to who this company is. So far, the only two things I've come across that indicate it that I can find, Microsoft have put their label on there, even though they didn't actually build it. They don't actually build stuff. It's that logo there, and that logo. And, of course, this is all the wireless. That's the wireless aerial for the controller, and that is the actual transmitter module. In the other model that I dismantled, it was shielded. So some sort of revision has left them to go against that. And also there's this tilt switch, which I think have all worked out is for, so it can essentially position the LEDs on the front panel to the position it is. So when you have it laying down, that one's controller one. When you have it sitting up like that, that one's controller one type thing. 
and of course being a modern device it's a solid one which doesn't have that lovely liquid metal that everyone doesn't like da, 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 da. so let's get this off I'm not too worried about damaging this thing because it's already buggered come on Okay, this is going to be difficult, isn't it? Um, hold on, I think I've just thought of a way to get these off. Da -da. Mm. What's that I can test on my mouth? So these are your... Yep, yeah, that works. That works quite nicely, actually. Oh God, good job it's buggered. <laughs> Why is it only one came off, but the rest is? Like same here. Ha! That one's coming off a lot better. go there's one GPU clamp off well, that'd be the processor and then you've got all the capacitors used for noise reduction and all that lovely jazz oh come on don't deny you want to come off yeah these are throwaway devices when they fail even PS3s have had their reliability problems. Everyone my brother knows who's owned a PS3 has had a problem with it. Ah, they have redesigned the GPU. Oh, wait, that's the CPU. Oh. That looks about the same. We'll get that heat gun coffee. These heat sinks could be useful, actually. I'll keep these for a PC or something. They're pretty big, hefty bastards, and they could be useful for something. Probably not, though. They should probably just be hoarding for the sake of hoarding. You know, like us geeks like to hoard according to everyone else in this world. That's what I apparently do, even though I let loads of good stuff go for the simple reason I don't have room for it. I don't ask everyone for their every bit busted junk they have. Now let's see if the GPU looks exactly the same. And it does. Except they glued them that down. That was their big refinement. They just glued the chips down. <laughs> oh dear. <laughs> well, that was certainly an interesting bit of trivia. How much left time with the camera? Two minutes, so we shall pause it. Yeah, or something. Oh, I'll just do more file transfer. Uh, Norton's complaining about something. Good old Norton. <laughs> Loads of people hate it, and well, it does the job. That's all that matters. Hmm. I wish I had alcohol spray, but I don't. Anyway, I'm going to stop the camera here and let do that because it's boring watching me clean shit. It occurs to in a teardown generally people want to know what everything is so here you've got your GPU set set with all this GPU goodness which has two chips on one chip and your CPU which if I remember correctly is some form of tri-core RAM which goes along the bottom as well. I think there's a total of 512 megabyte if I remember correctly. These are the, this is just like pretty much a power supply section. Takes up quite a lot of the board filled with MOSFET recorders and chokes and all that lovely jazz. On the bottom there isn't really much apart from noise filtration and a few other specialised chips to do various things. These could be, can't see the part numbers on them. Yeah, you know, I can on that one. I don't recognise it. 
then you've got this is a flash chip most this will be a flash chip so that'll be your use for your ROM that's your hard drive connector this is probably their equivalent of a self bridge in this thing which will do all the major interfacing and in fact looking at it and where the traces go to the USB few to that chip few down there, few to this which is, goes to your USB and network so yeah this is essentially your self bridge links to all the peripherals around the device there should be true, it also goes to the GPU and underneath, unsurprisingly, it also seems to file the same path the GPU actually extends quite a lot outwards and there's direct connections which also have lots of room in between them to stop interference and there's quite a lot of direct communication and from those lines you can work out what bit rate this will be running at which will be 32, that's just a random guess oh wait this is 64 bit processor I think and it's pretty much all integrated in a few chips and this will be, that goes down to there which is video connectors which also goes to the south bridge uh, this looks like some kind of video chip looking at it because all the traces of it, most of them anyway, seem to go down to here video output which... righty then, back to where we were before the memory card rudely interrupted us by running out so all the caps on this seem to be made by Rubycom there seems to be some sort of JTAG header thing there which is good for you console modders out there who like to hack these things <sighs> so it's quite interesting what the modders do there's a dent in that cap, not sure where, whether that's me or a factory thing uh, Talium, Talium caps which get loads of bad press I don't fully understand why because it's electrolytes I understand to be unreliable not these little SMT things you have got zillions of resistors yeah there isn't a whole lot, it's pretty much mostly integrated on a select few chips which is du 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 you've got pretty much you've got everything in here that makes a computer, you've got a CPU, memory I.O. and of course bus or communication, that's all these little traces you see between all these components and chips and there's quite a lot of separate traces of specialist data goes down like this or like these pairs will probably be RGB data but that's just pure getting you'd have to go into the data sheet for these things which is something I don't do for the camera because I'm lazy I do it for my own personal use but how many of these will be custom chips and how many of these will actually be off the shelf chips it will mostly be custom chips to where the data sheets, are, data sheets are kept in hidden archives away from anyone who's interested and who can learn off the devices which is a real shame data sheets by law should be available to anyone who wants them because you can learn so much off them by reading them companies shouldn't go to stamp out curious intelligent people from learning about their hardware it's like they even do their best to stop home game brewers for these consoles it's just why what is wrong with people making their own homebrew games for their own personal use or to do up as freeware or on the internet what is really wrong with that nothing a homebrew market can keep a game alive for bloody decades but anyway let's digress off this motherboard where we've pretty much explained everything you've also got the ethernet chip which is an ethernet interface this where does this go that goes to the 
IO, so does something. <laughs> That's really informative, isn't it? It does something. Stupid proprietary connector, which only connects to one power supply in the entire world. These seem to be on a parallel line. In fact, they seem to be on a series line. Could be some form of amplifier, and then it goes into this chip, which I don't know what that does, and then goes down and into the I.O. Probably this is a multi-layer PCB, so tracking of traces is a bit limited. Although you've got a bare spot, but is it fully clear? No, you've still got ground planes or negative planes under there as well as on the surface. But let's digress and move on. So we'll just put this down here on the floor. There's lots of bits of salvage off there, so I'm removing the GPU and that because they're cool and they can go up on the wall or something. And the caps will be useful. They're not cheapy caps, so we'll just grab that, grab a Phillips. We don't care about the warranty as void if still broken. You only care when the device is like new and you don't really want to do the warranty because you know how unreliable stuff is these days. Unless it's something you have to open to access the batteries, then it's, then it's something you instantly tear down when you buy. Like my ESR meter, pretty much open that up straight away. <laughs> See what it looks like inside. Oh look, the warranty seal's already broken. That offered up so much resistance. It didn't even try to offer resistance. So this will be like any standard disk drive, and I've had dismantled so many of them. I might delve deeply into it, but most likely not. I'm not going to go to damaging it, because I want to use this. If my drive dies... There's also a thing where they have a lockout chip in it which doesn't allow you to move it from 360 so you either have to flash that little lockout chip or you can just remove the electronics and replace them with the original electronics. So this comes apart pretty easily. There isn't much resistance at all. Ah, it's a lot smaller circuit board in there than I expected. Uh, I don't know which one's the lockout chip but it's on here somewhere. I just don't know which one. It's surprisingly well built actually. You've got your laser modules. You've got your CD and DVD laser module. That'll be your DVD. That's your CD. You've got a stepper motor for drive. You've got a stepper motor for spinning it around. And a standard DC motor for opening and closing the disc drawer. You've got your motor driver chip. Which always look quite nice. I like these motor driver chips. And of course, your do everything chip now, which has absolutely everything in it. It's not nice and separate like older designs. Second balls are a lot smaller than they used to be, basically. They've shrunk even more since I last dismantled the DVD drive, even rewriters. Tip of dismantle one of those ones built in light scribe, which would be really quite interesting. This is probably double sided board. Don't know. Let's have a look. I need to get a small screwdriver out. That's annoying. Right, grab this one. This one's good for really tiny, annoying screws. And what do you know, it never disappoints. I love this toolkit. It allows me to pretty much dismantle whatever I please, no matter what the manufacturers try to do to stop me. <laughs> Now we want to be careful with this because we want to preserve it in a working state. And so underneath there is nothing apart from a crystal oscillator and two capacitors who, which are made by... What is the company name on it? Is it going to be Rubicon? T-E-A-P-O I'm going to call them Tapo. I do not know who the hell they are. DVD ROMs, you've got no rewriter, so you can build a pointer out of this, but not a burner. So yeah, there isn't really much to the disk drive, there's less than I expected. I expected there to be like... Well, I expected it to be exactly the same as every other DVD drive I've dismantled. So the lockout chip will probably be this one. It'll be built into it anyway. There's some little JTAG connector or something you hack it with, I don't know. I've seen it on the internet somewhere. 
on repairing 360s and so on and so forth. So if I find the site, I'll put up the links just in case you want to repair your 360. Microsoft won't like it, but I'd fuck them. Why should they bloody... If people want to fix it themselves, that's their choice, it's their machine. And I will do whatever it, I can to assist people in repairing stuff. Better than throwing it in a damn bin. And if companies don't like it being repaired, tough bloody shit. It's like they don't like the second hand market. Well, tough bloody shit, it's here to stay. So that's inside the disk drive. Mechanics, exactly the same as every other disk drive that has existed in this sort of form factor. And in fact a lot of other form factors. It's only when you go to really early disk drives that you get variances in the designs. All plastic crap. Well, what do you expect? A warranty sticker that offers absolutely no resistance whatsoever and breaks when there's so much slightest bit of dust lands on it. They obviously don't want people tampering to peel it off, but... Ha! When would they actually repair one of these things? They just pull out a module, throw it in the bin, and then... That's it. That's pretty much how it works. Oh, something's broken. Pull out a module, throw it in the bin, sorted. It's fixed. That's apparently repairing something. Only down to a very basic level. So now let's have a take a look at the front panel a bit. And how much time we have left on the camera, which is enough time for the front panel a bit, there isn't much to it. So if we grab our screwdriver, because it makes a very good pointer, um, these screws can be put back on here, I reckon. Is So we remove our little light diffusery thingy -ma bob, which is being a bit resistant. There we go, off it comes. You got the usual Microsoft that they have to plaster all over the circuit boards, despite the fact they didn't actually make them. You got your crystal osculator, you've got some, probably a control chip on the back, some kind of microcontroller. Oh god, I just dropped it. Front panels on that can be useful to keep by, but they don't usually conk out. Which is just Microsoft branded. So who actually made this chip? God only knows. ST chip, which looks like some sort of EEPROM. 24C C04, so yeah, that's an EEPROM for holding settings. Hmm, wonder what sort of settings that would hold. So hackers out there, little EEPROM for you to investigate. Report back on that, please. I've never found a reader that can run these. Well, I might retry it some. Back to where we were when the camera rudely interrupted us again. Yes, the CPU and that essentially just being held of glue. You can just imagine the engineers screaming at this. Realising that they could actually do something, but no, management think they know better when they don't have an engineering degree behind them and years of experience. Ah oh dear, it's a shame really, the management really should listen to the engineers because at the end of the day, they are experts on designing this stuff. The people in management aren't. And Microsoft, well they're a software company, not really a hardware company. They should really come up with a spec sheet rather than designing it themselves. But yeah, back to this, so we've got a little processor, we've got tons of little random discrete logic capacitors and transistors and... Um, I think they're resistors, but it's impossible to sell, tell because they're essentially nano circuitry. You got your Wi-Fi antenna for your controller, and then you got your Wi-Fi controller e module for well your controller and another crystal. Oh wait, that's just one. <laughs> and is this uh, this is MS? So another Microsoft branded chip by the looks of it. With Rev F. Hmm. This has gone for a fair few revisions. 
What about the motherboard? What revision is that on now? Well, on the Elite models anyway, it'd be quite interesting to have a look. What rev have we got? There should be something indicating what rev it is. Uh, some handwritten crap on there and some unreadable handwriting. Why is it so many adults have absolutely terrible handwriting? So my parents have terrible handwriting where it's unreadable. It's like I seem to be the only person in class of readable handwriting. Um, a few component lists. They've actually got a few of their components actually listed and numbered, which is good. So there is some obvious care that has gone into designing this thing that you can see on this board. It's just a shame management seemed to take over on bloody process and GPU design that their solution was gluing the damn thing down. And it doesn't even look like they've tried to reduce the die size like they say in the articles. They might as well just say the truth and they just glue the damn thing down. The almighty glue! Which you can tell some, some of it actually, looking at on the GPU. You look at that, that's darker. That's white. The glue has actually peeled off the board halfway through there, there, and completely there. So, Microsoft, glue isn't the solution to everything. Only in the cartoons it is. Um, rev, 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 rev. I am not seeing it. There's E there, but I can, can't believe it. It would have definitely gone for more than that. Uh, there's various numbers there, which will probably be for testing purposes in the factories. Uh, yeah, I'm not seeing any rev things. There will be one somewhere, I've just missed it. If you see it, do tell me and point it out. Uh, there seems to be a whole map of what capacitors are what. Yeah, I can't find it, so I'll look at that another time. So what's our booty for this? There's a nice motherboard that looks pretty. We've got a disk drive, we've got one of these modules, we've got some nice heat sinks, and we've got fans. There is really isn't a whole lot in an Xbox you can salvage, but there is some stuff. And this of course goes up the top. And there you use your power button and your four LEDs, which are of course multicoloured because they also do red except an Xbox 360 owner never wants to see them flash red but they do <laughs> mind you the PS3 has its own flaws as well it's not fair to just go purely like the Xbox 360 is the only machine which has flaws and so on and so forth it's like PS3's have their own reliability problems my brother's mates, all his mates who have had PS3s have had them die on them as well with their own like version of the red ring of death which is an orange light of death or something so let's clean all these chips and heat sinks and all that lovely crap um, how am I going to clean these? water and a tissue nothing fancy or high tech here and then we can put these X clamps back on and keep them all together. So that's all for now, and I hope you enjoyed that complete and utter teardown, literally, of an Xbox 360, or at least what's left of a teardown. Thanks for watching. Hope it was interesting. Gave me something to do.